First of all, I would say to you, if you did okay on the take-home quiz, in other words, if, I can't remember which version of the quiz that I gave you, but if you can handle a projectile launched horizontally from a cliff, like in number one, and you would feel comfortable finding anything, range, or if you knew the range, working way backwards and finding the height, or finding the final impact velocity, if you are comfortable with number two, which is at an angle but starting on the ground, key ideas is, you know, at the top at maximum your VY is zero. You also know coming back down your VY final is the same as your VY initial, but negative. If you are okay with this one here, the airplane with the crosswind, and I think I added a, a projectile. Ah, I gave you a different version of the quiz. I'm pretty sure there should be a quiz here called 2011. Yeah, there it is. Um, I think I also then finished the quiz by putting a projectile and a cliff on there at an angle. If you're okay with those, you're good for about 80% of what's going on. Okay? So if you were also able to handle this thing, okay then you're in pretty good shape already. If you want to look at the review that I gave you, that was this bad boy right here. I double-paged it, but this thing. I'm going to tell you which questions I really, really like. Okay? Um, so number one is a great idea. Uh, sorry, number three. Huh, number one. Number three here, great idea of if I'm launching from the ground at an angle, what I can ask you. Maximum height, how fast it'll be traveling. How fast will it be traveling when it's at its maximum height? What will the Y component of the velocity be? Zero. Does that mean it's traveling zero? No, in fact, the reason it's only two marks, look at the marks when you're doing these, by the way. The reason it's only two marks is it's the horizontal component. That's your speed for a split second at the very, very top. And it's due sideways east or west or whatever. So number three is good. I like number four. Five is good. Okay. Number seven. So here is an example of a using principles of physics. I said five. Using principles of physics right to explain question. This one says, if I was answering this, number seven, I would probably, heck, Mr. Duick, why don't you find number seven in your actual notes? That would be clever. Hey, why don't you clip number seven? That would be really smart, Mr. Duick. If I was answering number seven as a using principles of physics right to explain question, if I was, uh, if they give me a using principles of physics right to explain question, first of all, if I was trying to answer this, I would say, I better mention those. I'm not talking, if not, if somewhere in my answer I don't mention horizontal and vertical velocity components, then I haven't answered their question. And they want me to explain the behavior. Here's probably what I would do. It's up to you, or you can just watch. I can print this for you when you're done, by the way, if you stick around till the end. They're talking about velocity. I would say something like this. Vx, what can you tell me about the horizontal velocity of a projectile? How does it behave? Oh. What can you tell me about the vertical velocity? Now, because this is worth four marks, I'd be a little suspicious if I just wrote changing. You know what I would probably say? Changing. I would write that down, and then I would say decreases zero at top, increases but negative. And the reason I might give them that, why else did they give me that drawing? Maybe they wanted me to, there, 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 there. That's probably how I'd answer it. Four marks. Piece of cake. Okay. 
eventually, there's going to be one of these on every one of your tests. And eventually, they'll get a bit more complicated, but by that time, you'll be far better. Ellen, question? Is that a, the answer key to this? Yeah. Looks like this, as a matter of fact. This is online. So what number was that? Five or something? Seven? Oh, there. there there's, there's what I mentioned for four marks. Now, they were only wanting the velocity components. I probably didn't need to say the acceleration ones, but I did. It. Extra information that's correct can't hurt. Okay. Other questions that I like. So I was on my which questions do I like rant. Um, I like number nine. So specifically, I'd like you to be able to handle, for some reason I forgot to copy the letter B, but this is part B. You should be able to handle finding a velocity by finding two components and adding them together tip to tail and doing the Pythagoras and the graphs. And if you need me to, I'll do one like that in a few minutes, or I'll do this one, but let's just keep going through here. Uh, hopefully the bonus video game that I gave you has helped you re remember what the graphs do. You have until the day of the test, so you have until tomorrow morning to still complete the bonus video game. Once you've written the test, I will no longer take the bonus video game. Okay? Question, Nicole? You look a little stunned there. No, the video game was so hard at the end. Oh, my last, yeah. And by the way, those last couple are way tougher than I'd give you, right? But, great. Um... Number 13, something like this. I'm going to give you either a river question like from last year or an airplane with a crosswind question. They're both the same question. Instead of a crosswind, think current. Instead of an airplane, think boat. But there's going to be one written question where I'm going to ask you to apply some vector math. Sixteen again is from the ground to the ground. It's asking you to find the range and find the total time of flight. Totally fair game as far as I'm concerned. Yes? What, what, what I mean by I like it, I, I'm telling you right now on the written section, there's going to be a from the ground to the ground. I won't tell you exactly what I'm going to ask, but you better be able to handle it and be able to find out whatever I'm asking. Uh, how long in the air for? What's the range? Oh, how, what's the maximum height? Oh, how long to get to the top? Oh, what's the velocity, magnitude, and direction after whatever, whatever seconds? Um, 17, just asking you, do you understand what change in means? What's change in anything? Final minus initial, a little bit of vector subtraction there, I think. Uh, Twenty, I just don't like as a diagram. It looks yucky, but I might ask you to add two vectors together and find the resultant. Like on your quiz, I think I gave you a force in one direction, a force in another direction. That's what's the net force, right? Um, I've already mentioned this. Okay, so 25, here's again horizontally from a cliff. So I totally like this one. This one is giving you the height of the cliff and it's, uh, sorry, ah, nice twist. Here, instead of giving you the height of the cliff, they're giving you the range, which is way easier horizontally actually. You get a much nicer equation. You can solve for t, you'll solve for t horizontally, and I'll bet you part b is find the height of the cliff. You'll solve for dy vertically. Oh yeah, there it is. How high is the cliff? That'd be a nice horizontal off the cliff question. Isn't it? Uh, 29, absolutely, you'd better be able to find the vertical and horizontal components. I don't know if I'll ask that as a specific question, but I guarantee you'll be doing that about eight or nine times. Hey, a moth! Is it the same one? No, I put it in the trash last time. Oh, sorry for those of you at home, we had a little moth there. So absolutely, absolutely, I'll get it later. Oh, it's all right there? Sorry, folks at home. Um, so once again, got to be able to do components almost in your sleep. Okay. Uh, let's see, what else do I like here? Okay, here's a great example, number 31. Here's an example off of a cliff at an angle. 
although this one's a bit easier. They gave you time t, which means that you didn't have to pull out the quadratic equation to find time t. But totally like this question. Fascinating. The scholarship one, that one's a little overboard, although I'd expect my top, like if you're trying to get 100 in this course, you should certainly try that one, look at my answer key and see if you can figure it out. So you're going to notice on my big reviews, towards the end, all of a sudden it'll say scholarship section or scholarship questions. I'll put two or three. If you're going for the 100% in my course, they're worth trying because if you get those, you'll find the test a walk in the park. You'll be like, really? That's what they're there for. No, the, all you do when you hand this in, I give you 20 out of 20 for doing all the questions. You know where you get the bonus marks? You do better on the test. I, I'm, I'm really trying in grade 12, like even the video game bonus marks, I was uncomfortable doing that until they dropped the provincials. Now that they've dropped the provincials or made them optional, then I'll give you a couple of bonus marks. I want you in grade 12 to get used to doing things for the sake of getting better at it so you'll do better on the tests because in university, Nicole, that's where your grade's going to come from, right? And I'm assuming most of you plan on going there next year or the year after. I will say this, though. I like number 35. I like number 35. Number 35 is a nice question. Okay. So having said that, is there anything that you would like me to go over specifically? And I'm freezing on this one, anticipating that maybe people would like me to do number 35, but I don't know. Yes? Have you looked at my online solution key yet to try to figure it out for yourself? Okay, I'm going to say I will, I'm willing to, but if you look at my online solution key and try and figure it out, guys, can you whisper? I feel like I'm having to talk over you. Um, if you look at my online solution key and try and figure it out for yourself, you will have learned it better. What I'm going to do is do one very similar to this, okay? Uh, 25, 40, 35 degrees, okay. So I'm going to do... something like this. Click. Copy. That wasn't where I wanted the screen clipping to go. Let's try that again. Undo. Undo. Click. Right there. Clip. Okay, this time put it somewhere nice, like right down there. That's better. So if you want to, you can quickly sketch this on a scrap piece of paper, or you can just watch, and I'll print this up for you at the end. Uh, I'm going to make the initial velocity uh, 31. I'm going to make the angle 32 degrees, and I'm going to make this distance here uh, 42. Now the only risk is, uh, Brennan, Brennan, I'm not sure whether it's going to be on its way down when it hits the wall or on its way up when it hits the wall. So I may have botched the diagram by changing those numbers. But we'll be able to tell whether it's on its way down or not depending on what we get for VY. If VY is negative, we'll know it's on its way down. If VY is positive, we'll know it's on its way up. Okay? So same question, different numbers, and that way you can still try that one there. With what velocity, magnitude, and direction does the projectile hit the wall? I'm going to, just for the drawing, and I'm going to assume it's on its way down. I'm going to assume the velocity is like that. That's what it hits the wall at. And what that really means to me, Brennan, is that I can break that velocity up into Vx, which never changes, and the final velocity vertically just before impact, which is going to be changing the whole time. In fact, you know what this question's really asked me to find? Vy final, that's what I'm going to spend the most time on. With me so far? Are we being launched at an angle? Components. Vx is going to be 31 cosine 32. Are you okay if I go that fast? And Vy is going to be 31 sine 32. Can somebody crunch those for me, please, and actually give me the numbers? I don't know what they are. Don't all rush for your calculators at once or anything. Yeah? 26.3? Okay, give me one second. I'm going to write that down. Sorry, I'm just wolfing down some lunch meat that I didn't get to. That was a little disgusting. Sorry, what, uh, what's VX?
VX is 26.3. Give me one more decimal, please. What's VY to four sig figs? Because this isn't my final answer, so I'll carry a few extra sig figs if I can. 16.4. Like that? Okay. You okay with our approach so far? Is it Brendan or Brandon? Brendan, with an E. Right? So I have been saying it right. Okay. I was trying to slur it for a bit there, kind of a brand, and because I wasn't, couldn't quite remember. So, and you're okay with, with Brendan, you're okay with this conclusion here of, of me saying, look, if they want the impact velocity, I can't find it directly, but I can find the components, and then I'll add them tip to tail like I've drawn. All right. Uh, VX, we just figured out. That's nice. I'm still going to go horizontal and vertical. I'm still right away going to say horizontally the acceleration is 0, vertically the acceleration is negative 9.8, and I'm going to say the horizontal velocity was 26.29, and the vertical initial velocity is 16.43. And with only two pieces of information in each column, I can't do anything else. Let's go back and look at our question. Is there something else that they told me? What, Alex? They told me dx, the range. You said dx? Yeah, the range. So, that, Which tells me I'm going to solve part of this horizontally now. I know that dx is 42. Why does that help me? Because I can find t. Which almost always, unless they tell you the time of flight, that's almost always in any projectile your first goal. You want to find out how long it's in the air for, and then it falls apart from there. Um, can you tell me an equation that has those in it? Again, uh, bring your formula sheets tomorrow. I have a few spares, but I don't have 30 spares. Yep. You ever got one? I'll get you those before you go. Okay. In fact, you know what? Why don't I do that right now, because that will help your uh, learning right now. Hey, can you tell me uh, an equation that has A, V, D, and T in it? In fact, I'm pretty sure that the half A T squared will cancel because A is 0. In fact, I'm pretty sure we're just going to get this. Scroll down a bit, Mr. Duick. Scroll down a bit. Come here. I'm pretty sure we're just going to get this. D equals V X T. In fact, I think time is going to be the distance divided by the velocity. It's going to be 42 divided by 26.29. Is that okay, Leah? For saying, yeah? Uh, 42 divided by 26.29. Time of flight before impact is 1.598. And I'll carry a few extra sig figs because this is not my final answer either. 1.598. But now I know over here, 1.598. Why does that help me? Do you remember what I said this question was really asking me to find? I said, you know what? I'm going to spend far more time trying to find this. That's what we've been doing so far. If I now write underneath here, vy final, can I find vy final from that information? Yeah. vy final is going to be v initial plus at. It's going to be 16.43 plus negative 9.8 times 1.598. Boy, this is going to be really close to a velocity of zero. And I, I think it's going to be positive, is it? Someone crunch it for me? Yeah, almost, I almost inadvertently fluked into having it dead horizontal when it hit the wall, which would have been really boring. Someone else want to double check? Not that I don't trust Alex, but I don't trust Alex. Sixteen point four three plus negative nine point eight times one point five nine eight. Race you all, slow pokes.
You get that, 0.77385. That's using the full value of time, so I'll go with that, uh, 0.77386. Is that what you guys got? No, yes, no? Yes or no? 0.76? Yeah, but did I type? I might have typed it in wrong. Okay, I'll carry this one. Positive or negative? Meant to be obvious. Positive or negative? My diagram's wrong, right? Really, it should be. And if I, if you'll have lots of room. I generally, on the written, put one question per page of an entire page to do one question because I've tried to tell you, do your diagrams big? So you'll have lots of room. I'm going to redraw this because I can erase really, really. Actually, no, because I want the viewers at home to see this. I'm going to go, nope, it's not that. It's actually, as it turns out, this. 26.29 plus this, which is 0.77386. Here's my impact velocity. Trevor, by the way, this is really a bad scale diagram. If this was 26 long, this is 0.7 long. Really, it's your triangle, and I won't draw it that way, but really your triangle should look like that, which would make it really awkward to find the theta. So we're exaggerating now just to make it easier. But I should point that out. Is that okay? Brendan, are you okay from here on if I said to you, find the velocity? Could you do the Pythagoras? Could you do the trig? You okay with that? That that's your final answer. Your final answer would be now do the Pythagoras, and then trig. It's going to be tangent, and it would be in this case above the horizontal as opposed to below the horizontal for your direction. Is that all right? So that'll let you try walking through number thirty-five on your own. And we did one like it in our notes as well, in lesson seven, I think. Any others from the review or specific situations that you're like, yeah, I'm not so hot about? Yeah. Sure. The extra review is not a bonus. You're not getting marks for doing it. You just, you'll get extra marks because you'll do better on the test. Yeah. What number? By the way, June, 80, uh, June 87, that's the provincial exam that I wrote. I got that one right. I graduated in 87, so. Sorry, which one, Alex? Number 16. Nice. Here's a good example of an airplane kind of a question. I have a feeling this one's going to be sine law, cosine law, which they used to emphasize more because we were smarter back then. They've eased up on you guys a little bit. They haven't done as much sine law, cosine law. They went out. So let's try this one together. I did say there is going to be some kind of an airplane traveling or river uh, current question, um, but I said I'm pretty sure on your test I kept it a little better. I think I kept it at a nice 90 degree angle. What you do need to know for an airplane is this equation. It's not one that's on your formula sheet. It's common sense. It seems to me the velocity in the air plus the velocity from the wind, that's what gives you the velocity on the ground. That's what, whatever the engine is pointing in, plus whatever the crosswind is blowing at, that's what the radar detects. Okay, You see what I mean by that's kind of a common sense equation? I think that kind of, hopefully that makes sense to you as well. Oh yeah, the engines plus the wind, that's what the ground sees. Now what's this question asking me to find, Alex? It wants me to find this. How would I get this by itself, Alex? How would I move this over? Ah, we're going to end up subtracting vectors here. We're going to get velocity of the plane in the air is going to be velocity on the ground minus velocity from the wind. Alex, how do I subtract vectors? It's a trick question. I don't. I'm going to change my equation and look up. It really is that. 
We don't subtract vectors, we add the opposite, right? Here's my equation. Now I'm going to dulp, draw a little picture. What's the ground velocity? Oh, did they say directions? That was silly of me. I should have put a compass rose on here a long time ago, Alex, because God knows I've watched that many a time. Ground velocity, 65 degrees south of east. Ground velocity, there's east. That's about 65 degrees south of east. There's my ground velocity. And how big is my ground velocity? 475. That's that part of the equation. I'm going to add to it the opposite of the wind. What's the wind? What's, what, what's the wind? What's the wind right now? 45 direction? East. What's opposite? What direction? I'm going to add 45 to the west. How am I going to add these two together? Draw them tip to tail. This is going to be a fairly challenging diagram. This is going to be where your geometry 11 is going to come in really, 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 really handy. You with me so far, though, Joel? We're good so far? Okay. Would you have said that no matter what? Yeah. I figured so. Joel, how am I going to add these two vectors together? Draw them. It means it's going to look like this. 475 plus, and 45 would be pretty short compared to 475. Alex, here's our resultant from the tip of the second one to the, hang on, Mr. Duick, I drew that backwards. Here's our resultant from the tail of the first one to the tip of the second one. Here is, um, do you see a right angle here? It's not going to be Sokotoa. It's going to be sine law, cosine law, but do you see any angle in my drawing right now? Not yet. Here's the only angle they gave me. Ready? I'm going to mark this up. Don't write this down. How big is that angle? Alex, my friend. Do that again. How big is that angle? Really? You're going to make this vanish on me? Okay. Sorry, something's vanishing. That's 65 degrees. Okay. I guess this new one. I'm using pen as pointer? I am. This is 65 degrees right here. Can you see a Z? Okay. Those will come in incredibly handy this year. Absolutely. So, Alex, the real question is, how big is that angle? 65 degrees. That's the only angle you can find. We can't find that one because it's all yucky slanty. Okay. In fact, you know what else I don't like about this? I don't think I did that diagram big enough. There. That's better. Isn't that cool? Now what? Are you okay on the cosine law? Okay. Do right. you guys want me? I can do the cosine law if you want me to, or if you. Yes. Sure thing. It's going to be v squared equals 475 squared plus 45 squared minus 2, 475, 45, cosine 65. It's on your formula sheet, Brandon. See if you can spot it. It's on the shrunk down part of the page. Yes, it's there somewhere. Okay. So you don't have to memorize it. You do have to be able to apply it. And this is going to find you, Alex, V squared. So what do I remember to do when I'm done? No. Just square root. We don't plus or minus in physics because we're dealing with real life data. So let's try this.
you get the velocity is 458. Okay. Kilometers per hour. By the way, I misspoke. You get the speed is 458. Yes. How do we turn that into a velocity? We need a direction. And here's where this question is nasty, and I'm going to go to my answer key. The reason this one is nasty, really nasty, is because, unfortunately, this side here isn't nice and vertical or horizontal. I can't find this angle. That will not help me find a direction. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to find that angle right there. That angle right there is east of south. Okay? Problem. Where the heck is that angle right there? Well, hmm. Let's look at my answer key. I'll show you what I did. Uh, old unit review answers. What number was this? 16? I remember doing this question years ago and going, wow, I was apparently pretty smart back in high school. Okay. So I did the 65, 65. I said that angle there, theta, I found it is 5.1. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And I know from my z that that was 65 right there. So if I'm going to use this angle, I can use south of east, 65 plus 5.1. And that's where the 70.1 came from, 65. Plus 5.1. So I'll say this again. Are you ready? I guarantee there's going to be a question like this on your test with some kind of an airplane crosswind thingy, but I'll set the triangle up to be right angles. I'll make it artificial. You understand this is way more realistic. Planes don't all fly at 90 degree angles to the wind, but I'll, it'll be a right angle triangle. Okay? Does that make sense? Any others? So that was a great review of the uh, vector map portion. I can hardly see you back there. I keep forgetting you're back there. You, can you see okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. You okay with south of east? It's south of east. It's heading that way, right? Or you could also have gone uh, 90 minus 70.1. You could have gone 19.9 degrees east of south if you had found that angle right there, which you can also find in a roundabout way. Your other option, Alex, for what it's worth would have been, now that you've gotten this far, add a right angle. If you find this, these two add to 180, and once you know that, you know that because that's 90. That's a lot of work. Kara, you have a question or are you just stretching? I have an answer. Yep. So specifically for a question like this, when we're looking at it sideways, up is not north. Right? I mean, that's not north. That's not south in real life. So when you're looking at it sideways and we want to show that way or that we can't say north or south, instead what we say is above the horizontal, which is what this one would be here, or below the horizontal, which is what this one would have been if we had actually ended up heading downwards. That's when we're looking at the side. And projectiles, we are almost always looking at sideways. Now, what I said, Kara, was if you called up north, I wouldn't take marks off, but I'd think bad thoughts about you. I'd probably put a little frowny face on the next to there on the test. Maybe even make a little frowny face cry. Maybe. But I wouldn't take marks off. I'd double check that when I marked the provincials. And they said, yeah, we just kind of think, though, they're silly for not really realizing. That's not north. In fact, I still remember in, in the marking session, there was a the guy in charge. That's not north. Why are we giving the marks for that? Because we're nice. You understand, right? That isn't north. That's uh, above the horizontal. And that's below the horizontal. Is that okay?
Yes, yes. Any others? Is that a hand up? No? Yeah. Absolutely. I'll make one up. And I'll try and think of every possible thing that I could ask. Okay? So. Let's give it an angle of 38 degrees. Let's give it an initial velocity of, oh, let's put some speed on this thing, uh, 142 meters per second. And let's suppose I told you the height, because this is the toughest. If they tell you the range, horizontally, since A is 0, everything's easier to solve for. But let's suppose I gave you the height, and I told you this cliff was 16 meters high. What could I ask you? I could ask you to find components, but I think you guys are all okay on that. Okay, so let's assume that's a done deal. What could I ask you? One of the first questions I could ask you is, find time. Okay. Are we at an angle? Components. So no matter what, we're going to have to do that anyways. Uh, I would say Vx, and you said I was okay doing it this fast, 142 cos 38, and Vy was 142 sine 38, because you remember that Vy is sine, and that's your stupid way to remember it, right? So 142 sine 38, 87.424. I figure that's good because there's a 9 right there, so this is really close to a 4. That's a good place to round off to. Should be reasonably accurate. Uh, 142 cos 38. Oh, this is nice. 111.9 because that's a 9 next to the 8 and a 7 next to the 9. That's pretty close. So 111.9. Horizontal, vertical. By the way, can you tell me right now, am I going to be solving this horizontally or vertically? And how do you know? I'm going to be solving it vertically. You know how I know? Kara, you're right. Louder. They gave me a vertical displacement, a vertical distance. Okay. Let's keep going. So let's do our usual list. Brett, are you making fun of me? You were, weren't you? Yes, but I have to, otherwise I can't talk. See, if I don't do that, you guys can't see. Pause. Second. Let's keep going. Oh, and uh, Brett, I would automatically write this as well. Uh, Vx and Vy initial. Uh, Vx is 111.9. Vy initial was 87.424. And Kara, you pointed out that I know dy. What's dy? Careful. Yes. By the way, if you miss that, you'll either get an error when you're doing the quadratic formula, or you might sometimes, it all depends on the values that I pick, you could get solutions that are completely nonsense. And I'm going to find t from here. Now, do you guys like to use the quadratic formula, or do you guys find v final and then use that to find t? You know what? We're going to do that anyways because part c, I'm going to ask you to find impact velocity, in which case you'd need to know vy final anyways. So let's find vy final. vy final is going to be vy initial plus at. It's going to be 
87.424 plus negative 9 point... Hang on, Mr. Duick. Brain pain. Let's try that again. I can't... I don't know T. I can't use that one yet. VY final squared is going to be VY initial squared plus 2 A D. This one works because I know VI, I know A, I know D. I'll remember to take the square root when I'm done. And here, Alex, I will remember that the final velocity is negative because just before it hits the ground, I'm pretty sure it's going downwards. Okay? It's going to be 87.424 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 16. 87.424 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 16 square root. I get a VY final of 89.2. Oh, but it's heading downwards. Negative. Negative. Does that seem right to me? 16 meters, only 2 meters fat? Well, 16 meters isn't that high. I haven't made a dumb math mistake, have I? I don't think I have. Plus 2 A D and it's vectors, it's vectors, it's vectors. Yeah, I think I'm right. Now that I know VY final, now I can find T. T is going to be VF minus VI over A. It's going to be negative 89.2 minus 87.424 all over negative 9.8. Time equals negative 89.2 minus 87.424 all divided by negative 9.8 brackets around the top and I get a time of flight of 18 well you know what since they want this as an answer I'll go to two or three sig figs I'm gonna say 18.0 up here I'll go 18.02 here seconds units make sure in your final answers make sure before you hand in your test you always check for units and sig figs in your final answers. So one of the things I can ask you from a cliff is time. Okay, Really quickly, I'm just going to cheat and check it on my quadratic solver to make sure I get the same answer doing so as a quadratic. I'm just a little suspicious why this velocity is so close to the initial, but I'm just thinking maybe 16 meters isn't that big a height. It can't speed up very much in that short a time. I don't know. So bear with me for a moment. It's going to be d equals vi t equals a half at squared. So uh, no, second function, quit app. Those of you at home, bear with me. Poly smoked. Yes. Polynomial root finder. Degree 2. Uh, A is going to be negative 4.9. B is going to be 87.424. And C is going to be, it's negative 16 on this side. When I move it over, it's positive 16. Solve. Ah. Positive. I don't put a plus sign there, Duke. Solve. 18.02. Woohoo! I am right. Good? B. Find the range. Well, the range is dx, and it's equal to that. Can you start drooling soon there, kiddo? Your head's turned over at about a 45. The mouth actually started to drop open, and you tried to close it, and it just started dropping open right away. I was waiting for one of your eyes to go down and one of your eyes to go up or something like that. You going to make it? Or I shall yell again if I need to. Oh, I could shock you with the fly swatter. Those hurt. Have you played with those at all? They get your attention. Brennan, you okay with that? Find the range. Equals whatever. I could ask you to find 
max height. If I say the word height, vertical or horizontal, okay, what do you know about the very, very top of any projectile? We still know that AY is negative 9.8. We still know that VY initial is 87.424, 87.424. But I know one more key piece of information at the very, very top vertically. What? What's zero? And that lets me solve for D fairly conveniently. Uh, VF squared, oh, it's going to be that one. So I think D is going to be VF squared minus VI squared all over 2A. It's going to be zero minus 87.424 squared all over 2 times negative 9.8. Now that'll tell you how high you go above the cliff to get the actual height. Since the cliff itself is 16 meters high, I'll add 16 to my final answer, and that'll tell me how high above the ground. Uh, make sure I type that in right. Zero minus that squared all over two times negative nine point eight. Three hundred and eighty-nine point nine three hundred and ninety meters above the cliff, plus the original sixteen meters. I can add sixteen in my head. On a test, I'll use my calculator just to make sure I don't do a dumb mistake. Four hundred and six meters is its maximum height. How long is it in the air for? OK, so here would be an example of what I would consider an A minus level question. D, find V after 15 seconds. At time 15 seconds, what's its velocity? Oh, that says speed. What's its velocity, magnitude, and direction? Well. Is it on its way up or on its way down? What was the total time of flight? 18 seconds. So after 15 seconds, do you think it's on its way up or on its way down? I'm pretty sure. Now, if it's ground to ground, I know it's exactly half the time going down and half the time going up. This is a cliff, but the cliff is 16 meters, and we just figured out that it goes 390 meters into the sky. I, I think it's almost halfway anyways. I'm positive it's on its way down. I think what they're asking me to find is... I think what they're asking me to find is that. That's V. What else do I know? What would you do with this to try and find it? Because I like this question. I like this question. Ah, I would do this right away, Alex. Absolutely. And I know VX, don't I? What was VX? I scrolled down. We, I wrote it down way, way back here. 111.9. 111.9. And VY is uh, now the most common mistake. Kids go, oh, it's 87.424. It's not. That's your initial VY. But it's amazing how many kids do the Pythagoras. And you know what they get for their answer when they do the Pythagoras? They get exactly 142 because they're just uncomponenting without realizing it. And you know what they get for their angle, Trevor? Would you believe they get 38 degrees, and they're not clever enough to notice, those are the same numbers that I gave you. So don't be one of those. I need to find VY final at 15 seconds. Well, I know time is 15. I know VY initial was 87 point, oh, I erased it, that was done, 424, uh, four, I know AY is negative 9.8, could I find VY final, and could I then plug it in right there, and could you then do the Pythagoras to find V, and could you then find the theta and Kara, this would be a theta below the horizontal for your direction. That would be a nice question. Nice twist. Instead of saying uh, when it hits the ground, tell you how far along it's gone and find the velocity at a specific point hanging in midair. That'd be kind of nice. Uh, what if VY final ended up being positive? What would that tell me? That's eh, still on its way up. 
I don't think it is in this question, but if you didn't know the whole question, okay? Give her an elbow, Emily. Emily, give her an elbow. Okay. And would you like my little Nerf baseball bat? I can loan you that if you. It's therapeutic and helpful. Okay. What else can I find from a cliff? Well, it's the same question as in D, but part E. Find the velocity when it hits the ground, the impact velocity, which would look like that. Vx would still be the same. You'd find Vy final when it hit the ground. And you could either use T or a distance of negative 16 meters to find Vy final. And again, Pythagoras. And again, uh, I think shift tangent is what most of the angles have been in this unit. I think that's it for off a cliff. Don't think I can ask anything else. Okay, that was a great question. Any others? You know what I would do? Best way to study? Do the review. You'll have seen about 85% of the questions. Read through the extra review that I emailed you guys. And any question that you go, because a lot of them will be familiar by this point. You'll be going, oh, yeah, I just did that with different numbers. I just did that with different numbers. Anyone that seems unfamiliar, glance at my answer key that I gave you. Look at it. And if, oh, yeah, that's what I would do. Then you're fine. If you're still a bit, yeah, try it with my answer key in front of you and see if you can puzzle your way through it. If you do that, as far as I know, there's only one curveball. I have a specific multiple choice question in mind. Okay. Any other questions? Otherwise, I'll end. But if there's any other questions, I'll still go. Okay. Who would like a copy of these? this printout here? Raise your hand if you want a copy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, I can solve it. Can I take shortcuts? So the Pythagoras, I would go like this. Well, first of all, V final. V final is going to be V initial plus A, see it, times T, 15, because that's the time they gave me. A V final is going to be negative 59.576, which would go there. So it's going to be 59.576. Squared plus 111.9 squared. Pythagoras says take the square root of that. The magnitude would be 127 points. That's 126.7. Be 127 would be your magnitude. Meters per second. At uh, the angle would be uh, shift tan, and it would be. Shift tan of 59.576 over 111.9. The angle ends up being 28 degrees. I'll print this up for you. Hang on. Oh, below the horizontal. Is that okay? So seven copies you guys want? Okay, let me just pause the recording.